Can everyone please be quiet? Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us on this wonderful day. I would like to introduce our R&B speaker, Ms. Waterhouse. She has been at R&B for 21 years. She believes in the limitless power of creativity and how the arts capture the spirits of the time. She is head of arts and creativity. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks very much for that introduction. Um, essentially, I've been at r and as, as you said, 21 years, which nowadays looks like a distinct lack of um, ambition. But the fact that I'm a 60-year-old woman or 60-year young woman and I'm at r and should give you some idea of r and respect for gender and gender equality. Um, Africa's Fearless Thinker, which is what we're here to talk about today, was created by a lady called Marika prince Lulo who I understand we're going to be getting online shortly. The whole idea, you'll possibly remember um, the fearless girl who was created in New York and she was staring down the bull outside Wall Street. She was there for a short period of time. The women at r and said, what are we going to have for the women which talks about women not in, a conf you know, not in confrontation but more about collaboration? And we went around to the sculptors in the country and we established that there were very few women sculptors and actually even fewer black women sculptors. So what we thought is whatever we do, let's create an art piece and out of that art piece, let's raise some funds and let's change the situation. A lot of people submitted ideas. Marika prince Lulo's idea was the most successful. Understanding she runs a foundry so no artist work, well, very few artists like that, if you're in sculpture, work in, in isolation. They work in collaboration. They have big teams of people who help her. So the bronze who stands is life-size and stands in the precinct at r &B. The bronze fearless thinker was created by many people, women and men, in her foundry. What happened was the bronze fearless thinker walks along with a lion. Now there's a particular bench with two lion heads on it, which is obviously a bench people can sit on. But the whole idea is Africa's fearless thinker is a young woman and she's walking alongside the lion. And to some extent, it almost hints at her guiding the lion. Now, RMB was established initially by three men, three founders. I think all of them are somewhere in Stellenbosch. It was GT Ferreira, Larry Dipinar, and Paul Harris. But in spite of that very strong male presence, the gender equality from the outset has been about we're all better with many brains around the table. We're better in collaboration. So it was never about confrontation. It was about collaboration. So it was so popular that women started to say at r and but we'd like one for our homes or we'd like one to gift to mothers, fearless mothers who've set the bar high or fearless sisters or fathers with fearless daughters, mothers with fearless daughters. So we created 21 bronze maquettes, a maquette being a smaller version of the big one. And they sold within an hour and a half at an art fair. And what happened was that is we raised 150,000 Rand through the sale of those, which was just a portion. And that 150,000 Rand is going back into assisting uh, young, talented sculptors who didn't have the means to buy the material to show their incredible skills. So as a result of this whole project, and over a two-year period, we will certainly have at least three more uh, lady sculptors in the market. It was perceived amongst uh, all cultures as being a bit of a man's job, but that has changed dramatically. And I think it's changed because of technology, and it's changed because you know, fundamentally now we look at people's ability and people's talent. We don't say, you know, we don't talk gender, we talk talent. And we talk um, opportunity and we talk who's inspired. Who's inspired to make a difference? Um, it, in r and this particular piece, the life-size piece, is a symbol of pride and courage and strength. And it also reminds all of us that if you are fearless, let's, if you think about it, you can think 
through solutions to anything before you act. We're not saying being fearless and go and jump off a waterfall. We're saying being fearless in your thought. Think through solutions. Don't necessarily always act fearlessly. There comes a time for responsible courage. And you all know when that time is. But fearless thinking can get you over all sorts of challenges. There's no reason to be a victim when you can actually be a victor. That becomes a mental choice. How are you going to tackle something? How are you going to do it in a way that you'll possibly all win? Because we also believe that that's something that can happen. A uh, lady, L Linda Kachink, was sees here. She couldn't be here today, but she's actually the person who's adopted. She's the representative at RMB of the Fearless Thinker. And I'm going to read one of her quotes. She also heads up, uh, Linda heads up the Africa uh, part of RMB's business. So she's the marketing person in the countries above, beyond South Africa, where we do a lot of business. We could call it Greater Africa. And Linda says, Africa's fearless thinker is a constant reminder to all of us at RMB of the important role women play in positively influencing economics at all levels of society. RMB is currently extending her powerful presence to some of our offices across Africa. So what we did is had a series of resin girls made, Africa's fearless thinking, obviously it's a young woman, you can call her a girl if you want to, because she could be in anything from grade eight onwards. Um, and if you couple that with the collaborative mindset, fearless thinking, it can unlock collective wisdom to support our clients, the broader society, and more importantly, to do good business for a better world. Now I'm quoting Linda because she is the person who holds that flag high and who's a, a great example of fearless thinking. Um, in terms of the narrative, what we do at RMB is we've got a, a, a QR code next to the Fearless Thinker. And what we're going to do is share with you, not today, but we're going to give you the Fearless Thinking video that we have. So if you go to the QR code with your phone, obviously it plays the video. Now you could add a QR code onto your piece and you can create your own narrative. Because what's important is what do you consider Fearless Thinking? What do you want to achieve through courageous collaboration? And at RMB, it's not about men at the expense of women or women at the expense of men. It is about how do we really do good work? How do we make this world better for all of us? How do we do the right things right? And how do we go into responsibly innovative spaces, which courage lets you into? We've got a history at RMB also of art because our founder said, why go and buy imported wallpaper when you can support somebody who's creating something beautiful? And there's something about creativity, and that's what blows my gray hair back. And that is that artists have an ability to capture the spirit of the time. And the lovely thing about art is it's not edited. You know, when you write something, however brilliant it is, and an editor gets their pen, they can add their slant to your story. However, with art, they can't do that. So with art, you tend to capture the spirit of the time. If the spirit of the time is, is conflict, that is represented in the art. If the spirit of the time is transformation or possibility, that is represented in the art. And what we're hoping with Africa's fearless thinker here, your version of it, is she represents everything that you can do creatively or creatively to get to a better place collaboratively. Um, everyone at RMB has art in their offices. It's not reserved for boardrooms. And you can generally choose the art. And there is something about creativity that exudes a positive energy. And tragically, over this COVID period, so many people have been negatively affected. We know that. There's, you know, as, as William Kentridge said, if we could only weigh all the tears, we measure everything else. In fact, Way All Tears, a poster he's done, comes from a poem by Rilke, but it's talking about, do we, you know, even if you have an argument, if there is some conflict, do you think of both sides? Do you ever weigh all the tears? Because it's never on one side. And that's something that COVID is probably teaching us, is to understand, to put an empathetic foot forward, to put your foot into the other person's shoes. And whether that relates to gender or whether it relates to talent or whether it relates to leadership or 
challenges. Weigh all the tears, see it from all parts, which is really a long-winded way probably of talking about the ability to collaborate if you're fearless. Not to fear constructive conflict. Tell people what you really think and then you'll get down to the real nub of the issue and then bring the best brains on board and the best talent and you'll get to a solution where everyone benefits. So our hopes for this Africa's Fearless Thinker at your school are quite high. But really what she does or doesn't do depends on all of you. So you tell me how you want to go about unveiling her at some stage and I can answer any questions because it's been a wonderful journey. Marika's now in the UK, but it's not meant to be RMB's piece. It's got a little something inscribed on the skirt that says an RMB inspired initiative. We can inspire things. You can inspire things. You don't want to own them. If something's got potential, it gathers momentum of its own and it becomes bigger than you ever imagined. So that's the idea. It's not about the size of the sculpture. Sculpture, I think she's 61 centimeters. It's about the potential of that sculpture to influence your thinking, which ultimately becomes your choices to change everything for the better. And that's really all I've got to say about her today. But as I say, I'm happy to be challenged. I am a little fearless, um, a little short-sighted as well. Uh, but by all means, questions, and you tell me what the next step is. I think you've got wonderful tissue. This cold weather, I thought I should have a little tissue, but I don't have a protein. It's not quite good. <laughs> I'll sniff. That's easy. On behalf of Somerset College and the Student Transformation Committee, we want to thank you, Ms. Colin and Ms. Waterhouse, for this generous donation and contribution that you have made to our school that will hopefully inspire us, inspire us all. We hope that you will accept this small gift as a token of our appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And there's something about proteas that feels fearless. They're not scared of a fire. In fact, they do better afterwards. They're indigenous. They're rugged and they're beautiful. So that's also something to think about. We will now do the unveiling. Before we carry on, I'd like to extend those thanks to the team here at Somerset College. I would like to thank Ms. Mattia, Ms. Lebrant and their team for organizing the live streaming. I'd like to thank my Student Transformation Committee who have supported me this whole way and I mean, we all work together this whole year and I'm really proud of us. I'd like to thank the teachers that have supported us during this time, namely Mr. Sayer, Ms. Besson, Mr. Scott, Mr. Ramsey. I'd like to thank Ms. Mitchell Baker in her absence and, of course, Marika from overseas. We are gathered here today to celebrate the unveiling of our very own fearless thinker. And as we welcome her onto our grounds, we must welcome the ideals which she represents. To think fearlessly. What does that really mean? To me, the process starts by looking inwards. We need to reflect on, what, on ourselves and what role we play in society. Many of us were born lucky. We were born in safe environments with security and dreams that venture further than daily survival. In South Africa, not everyone can say the same. Our lives and lifestyles cannot be disconnected from past lives and lifestyles. 
We cannot ignore the system which predates our constitution. We cannot ignore that while we move towards progress, certain systems have not progressed. Our generation has often wanted to shed that history, to start anew. But that in and of itself is a luxury. Instead, what I suggest is that we use these resources to sensitize ourselves to societal issues and gain more knowledge, not less. We need to dig beneath the surface and uncover the legacies on which we build our new lives. As Amanda Gorman wisely says, while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. The truths of our past lead us to more uncomfortable questions. What have we gained because of our past? What are we afraid to let go of? There's a big difference between danger and discomfort. While one should not enter into dangerous scenarios, the feeling of discomfort can bring up important questions. For instance, danger is being surrounded by gangs and gender-based violence in an ever-growing informal settlement. On the other hand, trying to ignore a homeless person at a robot while in your luxury car, that's discomfort. Let us fearlessly wrestle with our discomfort, sit with it and understand it, not run away. What makes us uncomfortable? Why does it make us uncomfortable? Are there certain things we're afraid of accepting? It seems we have become accustomed to a lifestyle that is not sustainable. Not only are we using too many resources, there are too few people enjoying them. It's easy to frown upon big businesses who have big carbon footprints and use cheap labor, but we must be courageous enough to analyze how we perpetuate environmental and social injustices ourselves. The recent social unrest in our country has put everyone on edge. What this has highlighted is the tensions that still exist in our country. Our current unemployment rate is at a new record high of 32%. A recent UN report stated that one in five South Africans live in extreme poverty on less than 28 rand a day. It has become increasingly impossible to pretend that the current system is working if these are the outcomes. How are we connected to this? While we aren't directly or consciously celebrating the system, we're also not condemning it, nor the vast wealth accumulated by some, including ourselves. The current status quo allows people to protect property, inheritance, and profits. We're making money by working hard, yes, but does this argument then lead to a conclusion that impoverished citizens are not working hard? I'm asking these tough questions as prompts for discussion. I cannot claim to know the answers to these questions, but I'm ready to explore them more openly. These are important discussions to have, but they can often feel overwhelming. A fearless thinker does not have to be fearless alone. The original fearless thinker at RMB's headquarters can be seen walking alongside a lion. Instead of fearing the animal as a beast, she welcomes its courage and support. We too can stand alongside each other. We can learn together, grow together, question things greater than ourselves. One of the best ways of gaining knowledge is by engaging. This is not taught in our textbooks. You can't exactly Google the answer. By engaging in dialogue, we're taking the first step in the right direction. We're admitting there is something to learn. Importantly, to think fearlessly pertains to silence, contemplation. Talking without listening to others is not fearless, but rather a sign of ignorance. Is it imperative to think before speaking, listen before judging? The process of decolonizing education has only just begun. There is a need to address and redress the context in which we live. Through this process, we will be able to tackle big topics such as white privilege, systemic weaknesses, 
and social injustice. These terms may seem grandiose, and it's sometimes easy to leave these issues to the so-called professionals. There's a sense that we, as young and inexperienced individuals, aren't meant to grapple with these big problems. This, fellow students, is not at all the case. If we expect change, we need to be a part of it. We need to drive it forward. While we are caught up in a fast-paced world with fast fashion, fast food, fast tracks, we need to take a step back and focus on a longer-term vision. What do we want the world to look like in 20 years? Studying here at a privileged institution, we have access to resources that many do not. While everyone has a right to be educated, not everyone is. This makes our education even more precious. It gives us agency. Being here, we have a responsibility to make use of the space, to ask questions and follow our curiosities. We have the potential to reimagine a better a future for everyone. We need to be fearlessly creative. Of course, this includes sacrifice. We need to sacrifice a status quo that benefits certain people so that we can establish a system that allows everyone to dream big. While we are products of history, we can also produce a new legacy. It's often difficult to join the call for action if we do not understand what we are acting towards. I invite all of you to engage with your peers and ask unnerving questions. We must recognize the flaws of today and locate ourselves in relation to these flaws. But that is only the beginning. We can use these insights to construct a new reality. We too must stand with our own lions. We must not be afraid of the roar. I'm back. Thank you everyone for coming. I will ask the Matrix to stay behind. But other than that, it was a pleasure having you all to celebrate this unveiling today.